we as residents need to step up and quit pointing the finger and just start doing the right thing. This West Texas Park is being watered at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. With cities urging you to restrict watering to the evening, we're asking why they appear to be breaking their own rules. It's only fair that if you're going to follow the new water restrictions, West Texas cities do the same and lead by example. So when you see the city watering, it might look like a violation. But as CBS 7's Bo Berman explains, it's not always that simple. Bo? Well, Tatum, that's correct. We've all had to cut back our water usage. So when some people saw the city watering today in the middle of the afternoon, they were outraged. After getting those phone calls, we called the city of Odessa with a simple question. Why are you watering during the day? The instructions from West Texas cities have been clear. Water less often and make sure it's at night. That's why some Odessa viewers were surprised to see the city watering UTPB Park around 2 o'clock Friday afternoon. Even the H2O West Texas website says that watering during the day is wasteful because of high evaporation rates. Parks and Recreation head Steve Patton and city spokeswoman Andrea Goodson agreed to sit down and talk about the issue. The efficiencies of water by all means are better in the cooler portions of the daytime. We weren't watering the park, we were testing the system. With more than a thousand irrigation heads covering 100 acres at UTPB Park, Patton says it's necessary to test the system here and there. And they're doing the same thing citywide. Patton says it can also be necessary to spray during the day to pressure up the system, something you have to do with large sprinkler systems versus the kind in your yard. We're going to follow the schedule as close as we can. We are right now only watering the parks twice a week. They look terrible, but so does everybody else's yard. Odessa admits they are watering some for the good of the softball fields before competitions, which generate income for the city. Other cities really want this tournament also, and so we're trying to at least keep some amount of the grass green out there. That grass is being covered with recycled water. It's water that's already been flushed down the toilet and gets sent to the city's reclamation plant for treatment. The end result is cleaned water, but not to the standards for drinking or bathing. The city doesn't have a facility capable of cleaning it to drinking standards, so really it's use it or lose it. So if you compare the first five months of 2009 with the first five months of 2011, you're going to see that the city has reduced water usage by 27 percent. That's right, and when you look at the water numbers, in addition to the city's reduction, ECISD has actually lowered their water usage from 2009 to 2011 by about 60 percent. So you can see there, the, uh, both organizations are actually doing a pretty good job in reducing. Reporting live in the studio, Bo Berman, CBS 7 News. Bo, thanks very much. The city of Odessa urges you to call the Parks and Recreation Department if you see a malfunctioning sprinkler head spraying water into the street. A recent rash of vandalism has left some sprinkler heads broken. The city is repairing them as quickly as they can. To report a broken sprinkler, call 368-3548 during business hours. In Midland, you can dial 685-7376. New restrictions from the Odessa City Council mean you won't be stuck hand watering your lawn. The option was originally on the table for discussion, but the city decided on some other restrictions. Starting July 1st, only commercial and mobile car washes are allowed. You are not allowed to water your sidewalk, walkway, driveway, parking lot, streets, gutters, or home. Also, all leaks must be repaired in a reasonable amount of time. And if you break any of those rules, you could receive a fine of up to $2,000. As for when you can water your yard, here's one more look. Even numbered houses can water on Saturday and Tuesday nights between 6 p.m. and 10 a.m. the next morning. For odd numbered homes, you can water on Sunday and Wednesday nights, again from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. These restrictions are also mandatory for Odessa and Midland, and they begin on July 1st. That information is up on our website. Just go to CBS7.com. New details on a ban on texting while driving that's been shot down by Governor Perry. It may not be the end of the issue here at home. Perry vetoed the bill earlier this afternoon. But back in November, Odessa and, C and Midland city leaders told us if that happened, they would bring up the issue to their respective city councils. It is possible for individual cities to propose and institute such a ban. Places like San Antonio, El Paso and Stephenville have already done so. The texting bill was one of 23 that Perry vetoed this afternoon. 
One man is dead after a rollover crash in Andrews County, and the heat might have been the cause. The crash happened around 630 on Highway 115. DPS communications tell us a pickup was headed east when a tire blew out and the vehicle rolled. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. His name has not yet been released. DPS officials also tell us that the heat could have played a factor in the blowout, but troopers are still investigating. A car catches fire on the interstate all after a drunk driver leaves it running. It happened last night near Monahans. The Ward County Sheriff's Office tells us Ramulo Lozano of Sanderson was driving drunk on the I-20 service road when the road ran out. Lozano reportedly stopped his car in the brush and then kept walking. The heat from his car caught the grass on fire, which then caught his car on fire. Monahan's DPS picked him up alongside the interstate and took him to jail. He is now charged with DWI. And a Fort Stockton man is involved in a deadly head-on collision near the town of Mertzen that killed four people, including two children. DPS troopers say it happened Thursday night on Highway 67. Glenn Hodges was driving south when troopers say he collided with a car carrying two 21-year-olds, a two-year-old and a six-month-old baby. All four were from San Angelo and were pronounced dead at the scene. Hodges was taken to a San Angelo hospital. For more stories all new tonight at 10, as crews from across the nation descend on West Texas to offer fire support, there's one thing Fire Marshal Dale Little can't help but notice. There are more women joining the force than ever before. A fire crew from Montana has recently joined the teams, gathered at the Midland County Firehouse, and a large group of them are female firefighters. Well, there's getting to be more and more, and I think we're getting more respected as like, we go on. but. I've never had a problem with it. All the guys seem to get along with us just fine and show respect. I think it provides outlook for other women to say, yeah, we can do it because it's perceived as a man's job. There's quite a few of those. And so I think being a woman on the job, it's nice to put that aspect and that picture out there that it's not just a man's job and that we can do it. This crew will be here for the next few weeks, responding to fires all over West Texas. Four days in a row of record high heat and 11 in a row of triple digits. Is there any relief in sight? Meteorologist Juan Acuna is standing by right now with a look at what the weekend holds. Juan? Well, Tatum, in the short term, it really doesn't look all that good. But as we look in the long term, we might have some good news coming up later on next week. But as far as we took towards your morning forecast, still warm temperatures in the early morning hours at 7 o'clock. Odessa will be in the upper 70s, 70, 77 degrees with partly cloudy conditions as we look for more clouds to start to make their way into the area. Midland will look for 76 to 15 miles per hour. So taking a look at your hazardous weather outlook for tomorrow, there is a fire weather watch for southeastern portions of New Mexico, as well as in the Guadalupe Mountains from morning till evening and down towards the south near the pink. A heat advisory remains in effect till Sunday evening. So we have a lot of fire weather concerns this weekend through Father's Day, but coming up a little bit later on in weather, like I said, during the seven day forecast, we have some big changes and I'll let you know what they are coming up in just a bit. Juan, thanks very much. Emergency crews held a disaster drill to be prepared in case of a chemical related emergency. A full scale decontamination exercise was held today at Midland Memorial Hospital. It's part of a two day training course designed to help local responders be prepared for a chemical disaster. Today they responded to a chlorine spill and a plant explosion, even running victims and donning hazmat suits in the drill. Officials tell us drills like this are very important in West Texas due to the amount of chemical related work. Midland police want to help you reconnect with you with your stolen property. Next Wednesday, the stolen property division will be showing all the recovered items they have found over the past few months. These are items taken from homes, businesses and cars in burglaries and include lawn care items, hand tools and air compressors. The viewing starts at 8 a.m. in the basement of the police department. West Texas staffing agencies are seeing a trend of promotions without a pay increase. A recent survey conducted by Robert Half International showed that 55% of employees would take a promotion without a raise. Some companies are not always financially able to compensate their employees, but they still want to reward them for their hard work. It shows your ability to do more, to take on more responsibility, and it aids in your career growth. It could help you, you know, your resume look a little bit better. And I also recommend, you know, if you do get a promotion without a pay raise, to ask for additional things such as time off. 
Also remember that a promotion now could mean even more money somewhere down the road. Encore is showing off the new smart meters this weekend in Midland. The company will install the smart meter to more than 3 million homes and small businesses over the next two years. The meters help consumers track how much energy is being used and it should save them money on electric bills. They'll be on display tomorrow at the Hilton in Midland on Wall Street. The Mobile Experience Center will be open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The 78th annual Big Spring Cowboy Reunion and Rodeo saw a big turnout this week. The reunion and rodeo kicked off last night with events including calf roping, barrel racing, and bull riding. Tonight was the continuation of those events plus a showcase of local songwriters in the area. The event finished off with a concert and danced by country star John Anderson. Finally, a break from the triple-digit temperatures, and could there actually be some rain in the forecast for next week? Juan Acuna is back after the break with a look at your seven-day forecast. And a little later on, a much-anticipated new aquatic center is scheduled to open tomorrow. We'll have all the details. You're watching CBS 7 News, your eye on West Texas. Activity and the fire weather danger will be high, of course. All right, Juan, thanks very much. Pest control specialists say this heat is bringing dangerous critters like mice, scorpions, and snakes closer to home. The Sibley Nature Center says it's because these critters normally go underground to stay cool, but the extreme drought makes it hard for them to burrow, causing them to find new homes in our neighborhoods. Burrowing is an adaptation for coping with. Uh, uh, like the heat during the day and also with, with drought conditions, but the our particular drought is, is very severe. That has active spiders on it. Pest control specialists say these animals are constantly looking for more moist areas, so you are more likely to get the creepy crawlers the more you water your lawn. They are another good reason to conserve water. There are programs during the school year to make sure children don't go hungry, but what happens during the summer months? We'll introduce you to one problem, dedicate one program that is dedicated to fighting child childhood hunger. It's coming up after the break. You're watching CBS 7 News, your eye on West Texas in controversy over the cost of construction, the new Big Spring Family Aquatic Center is ready to open its doors after months of anticipation. From 1 to 6 o'clock tomorrow, the facility will have free admission for everyone who comes out to the grand opening. There's a tube slide and also a lazy river. And with the past couple of weeks being in the triple digits and one of the worst droughts we've seen in years, the opening couldn't have come at a better time to cool off the public and give them a place to go and cool off and have a good time. The, the weather's just been terrible this year and even though we are in a drought, uh, we still have the water available through our, our good conservation program. Officials are expecting anywhere from four to 5,000 people to show up tomorrow. School may be out, and that means there are plenty of hungry kids looking for something to eat. The second annual Food First Summer Bag Program began today. The West Texas Food Bank gave food for children in need during the summer. 100 children in Midland took home a full bag of nutritious foods. During the school year, a lot of kids get free and reduced lunch. High percentages in schools here have free and reduced lunch. That helps kids. There's backpack programs during the school year. During the summer, they're at great places like Casa de Amigos and they get meals, but there was nothing during the weekend and the summer. The West Texas Food Bank will be holding the program every Friday during the summer. Whitney Harding joins us now. Before we go tonight, it's a food lover's dream, I think. Take a look. This is serious competition for the Odessa Heroes Rib Eating Contest. It was fire versus police at Texas Roadhouse today. Police and firefighters were raising, or police were raising money for the Police Athletic League, while firefighters were raising money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. The designated eaters had plenty of support and plenty of mouth-watering ribs. Odessa firefighter Lorenzo Rivas was declared the winner, meaning MDA will get the proceeds and Rivas's family will get a meal catered by Texas Roadhouse. It's kind of kind of yucky, but, but fun, <laughs> right? It looked good. Yeah, looked really yummy. <laughs> they were stuffed, I'm sure. David Letterman is coming up next. You make it a great weekend.